Okay. All right. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lizzie. Welcome to another episode of today's Anatomy Question. This series is so much fun. I'm really, I'm so happy that we're doing this. <laughs> Me too. And um, as you all know, Mary Richards is an anatomy expert, and she is the one of the co-teachers for our upcoming digital course, Experiential Anatomy, experientialanatomy.yoga. If you go there, you get on the list, and you'll get more of these videos. Um, what I love is the term we're developing as we're outlining the course about movement literacy. Yes. I love that concept. So we thought today we'd talk a little bit about, move, in terms of movement literacy, I wanted to talk about my knees um, and what it means, kind of the language of the knees. So when we're practicing yoga, asana, and we feel something in our knee, where do you differenti differentiate between sensation and pain and what are the big warning signs of things we never want to feel in the knee? Okay, knees are my favorite joint because I have so much personal experience with knee reconstruction. Of course you have a favorite joint, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I do, I have a favorite joint, I have a favorite muscle, you know, that's just sort of the way I roll. Um, but the knee is really one of the largest and perhaps the most complex joint in the body. And the way the knee is typically described, it's typically described as a hinge joint. Yes, I've heard that before. And I really want us to move away from that term and also the conceptualization that accompanies that term because really the only true hinge joint in the body is the elbow. Okay. Okay. The knee is actually three joints and yes yes so it's three joints there is a midline aspect that's called the medial condylar okay okay because the ends of your thigh bone there are two round knobs at the end of your thigh bone where it meets your shin bone those are called condyles medial toward the midline. I just want to make sure we are speaking the same language. Okay. So there's a medial condylar aspect to the knee joint. There is a lateral condylar aspect to the joint. And then there is the articulation between the kneecap, the patella, and the thigh bone, the femur, the patellofemoral joint. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, Sort of the outlier of the knee, if you will, is the strut-like bone on the outside of your lower leg called the fibula. You can feel it, yes. And your IT band attaches right where you're touching, Lizzie. Uh-huh. Now, the fibula isn't actually part of the knee joint, but it's such a proximal neighbor okay. that it definitely uh it's involved in the in the neighborhood barbecue if you will okay okay so what happens if you come onto your mat lizzie okay and and sit comfortably with your legs extended so your legs straight in front of you and dandasana staff pose i'm gonna just Okay. Position the camera slightly. <laughs> see, how's that? I can see you very well. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take hold of your kneecaps. Just take your index fingers and your thumbs and take hold of the sides of your kneecaps. Keep your legs relaxed, please. And I'd like you to just very gently press the kneecaps from side to side. And then I want you to uh, adjust the orientation of your fingers and move the kneecaps up and down. It's so squishy. <laughs> okay. So I, right there, you can kind of feel the complexity of action that's occurring in your patella. 
And I believe that the kneecap is probably the most important bone in the body. Yeah, because without it, we wouldn't be able to walk. Okay, but no one thinks about their kneecap. I mean, that's not a bone that gets taught, really. Unless they're experiencing pain. And you'll often hear from your students on the mat when they're practicing warrior two or really any pose where the knees are bent in flexion that they may experience pain under the kneecap. Okay. And there are several reasons that may arise. The person could have cartilage wear and tear. Mm -hmm. They could have an issue where the kneecap isn't tracking properly. Yes. Because you know how I was talking earlier about those knobs, those condyles mm -hmm. at the end of your thigh bone? Well, there's a groove between them. And on the back of your patella, there's a little flange and it needs to track in that groove. Mm -hmm. And so you can feel when you're moving the kneecap from side to side that you're kind of jumping out of the track. Yes. Well, that, yes, that can happen in asana. Okay. Okay. And so what the kneecap does is it allows us to straighten our leg and it keeps us from falling when we walk. Because without it, if you think about it, if you don't have a kneecap, what stabilizes your knee? Uh-huh. Yeah. Nothing. It's a fulcrum. It's like what prevents it from opening in the front, you're saying. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So the knee is most stable when your legs are straight. Mm -hmm. So for people uh, with arthritis, for instance, or a history of ligamentous injury, say they've torn their ACL, and had it reconstructed. Straight leg asana can be really helpful for them to learn to stabilize. Mm -hmm. The most vulnerable position for the knee, where you have the least stability in the joint, is when your knees are bent. So if you come into warrior two, <laughs> let's just get right into it. Do you, um, <laughs> what's best? Hold on. Shall I be... <laughs> There's no head in that. <laughs> Let me. Can I maybe? Do you want me to be facing you, or do you want me to turn to the side? I'd like you to be facing me, Lizzie. Okay. okay. So I'd like you to percolate in Warrior Two for a moment. And now, right now, your thigh bone, because your knee is bent, your thigh bone is rolling backwards on your shin bone. Okay. Okay. And now your knee is at its least stable. Okay, and your shin bone is actually rotating as well to keep yourself together. And you don't, we don't even realize this because it's a passive joint movement. Okay. Yes. Okay, so can you feel in Warrior Two? where are you working? Where do you feel the work around that front knee? I feel it actually here. Right? Uh-huh. Right a little there. Um, and I guess I feel it on the outer knee a little because I've been taught to try to open the inner knee more. Like uh -huh. to collapse. I've heard that this is a bit of a danger. That is a danger. That is. So when you're practicing warrior two or extended side angle stretch, it is important that the center of the kneecap is centered between the second and third toes. Second and the, okay, so not the big toe the next, between the next and the next. Okay. We, we want the knee lined up with the center of the foot. Right. As well as the center of the hip. Okay. Because the knee is like Arjuna in the body. It re, it's, it's there standing in the middle of the battlefield between the ankle and the hip. Right. It's and balance. Yeah, and balance is very important then. So for all of our students, we want the center of the kneecap between the second and third toes, whether they're knock-kneed or they're bow-legged. So I see this a lot. Like I see people, yes. they're doing this. They're hanging out in this kind of, and so what do you, 
I often just say lengthen the inner thigh it protects the inner knee. What do you? Mm -hmm. What things do you say? I, I instruct it a little differently. So what I do is I come up to the outside of the person's front leg and I place my finger right above the knee on the outer thigh and I say press into my finger. Uh huh. Okay. Because I want them to have that biofeedback, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now, you were saying earlier that you felt more sensation kind of lower in the knee near your shin bone. Yeah, that's something I feel. I, I've got something there. Mm -hmm. I feel sometimes a pull there. So that's common, especially in female students. And that tells me that you're actually using your ligaments more than your quadriceps and your hamstrings to stabilize your knee. So what and would you say to me if I'm in your class? So I would have you do functional training mm -hmm. at the start of class to prime the pump mm -hmm. for the muscles that stabilize the knee. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have a blanket nearby, Convenient. I <laughs> I'd like you to roll it into a tube, and I'd like you to come back to Dandasana and sit in Dandasana. Okay, do you want me to roll the short end or the long end? The long end, okay. please. So, we didn't plan this. We're no, we didn't. Plan. This is so off the cuff. Okay, so. Now sit in Dandasana in staff pose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, pla and place the blanket in the back pocket of the knee. Huh, okay, I was sitting on the blanket, so... Yeah. So place that lengthwise, yep. Okay, now keep your heels glued to the mat. Your hands can be wherever you'd like them to be, resting by you, on the thighs, whatever works. Now your heels are glued to the mat, and I want you to exhale and press down through the knees, trying to press through the blanket. So I can, but I don't let this happen, right? No, don't let that happen. <laughs> press down and hold... And I like to count for five seconds, which in my brain is ohm one, ohm two, ohm three, ohm four, ohm five. Relax. Okay. Now do it again. Press down through the blanket, keeping the heels grounded. And you hold for five seconds. And then relax. Okay. Now tell me where you feel that work. In the, in the quadriceps. Right where it belongs. <laughs> okay. It's, okay, so what happens is we tend to move from our joints a lot in asana. And I want us instead to have our muscles moving us in asana. Mm -hmm. So by using this dandasana technique to wake up the quadriceps, keep your heels grounded, it can help inform your standing asana. You know, that's so interesting, Mary, because that tug just below the patella on the front of my shin, I feel sometimes, especially when I've been sitting, like if I'm teaching and I've been sitting, talking, talking, talking about yoga, and then now it's time to stand up and start doing yoga, and then I'll do something that's, that's nothing. Like just I'll step down off a platform or something which... You know, I mean, I go skiing and I bike and I think of myself as being strong and then I'll have that strong tug. And I think that's what you're saying. It's that the quads aren't really warm. They're not working. It's like the, and the ligaments are, are catching the slack. Yeah, and it's particularly important for women because the relationship between our hip and our knee tends to be steeper. Okay, this is the last thing because I think we're getting a little bit overloaded. But I want to hear this. So what do you mean about steep hip knee? So remember how I was saying that the knee is arjuna in the body and it's trapped between the ankle and the hip? Mm -hmm. Well, if we go up to the hips now and we consider the difference between male and female anatomy. Okay. The male pelvis is a vertical rectangle. Right. And the relationship between the male hip, knee, and ankle typically is more vertical. Yeah. 
But women, our pelvis is an inverted triangle. And so our relationship between the hip and the knee tends to be more angular. And that increases force into the knee joint. Especially maybe the inner knee. Exactly. The medial aspect of the knee. Got it. So it's very important for everyone, but especially for women, that our quadriceps are well balanced and that they are the first ones to arrive at the movement party. <laughs> so wonderful, as always, Mary. We've got to do another one about because, but it's, I'm not opening this can of worms, but I just <laughs> want to say Virasana. Which okay. There's a big yoga myth which I'd love to get your feedback on, that virasana is healthy for the knee. And I have had um, differing sensations in my knees when I do virasana, which make me suspect that it might not be healthy for my knee. So, but don't, don't answer now. We'll do it yeah. in another video. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a, I, I can't wait to have that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where can we find more from you, Mary Richards? Uh, MaryRichardsYoga.com. And I just revamped my website like a few days ago. Uh, and also on Facebook at A Little Yoga Goes a Long Way. Okay, that's so good. I'm LizzieLassiter.com. And um, ExperientialAnatomy.yoga is the place to go to yeah. stay in the loop. I just booked the venue to film the course. It's coming out next year. We're so excited. Thank you. So excited. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste, Mary. Namaste, Lizzie.